so the generalization of this for all eigenvalues is the following theorem. Which is a very central theorem in this variational characterization of eigenvalues. This is a theorem by two people, Courant and Fisher. This is called the min max theorem. So as usual, our setup is A is an N cross N Hermitian symmetric matrix. And it has eigenvalues. Lambda 1 less than or equal to lambda 2 less than or equal to etc. Lambda N. And suppose uh, or let K be an integer. one less than or equal to k less than or equal to n. Then we have two, two results. The minimum over w1 through w n minus k in c to the n. So I am allowed to choose um, n minus k vectors in c to the n over which I'm doing this minimization. The maximum over x not equal to zero, x in c to the n, x perpendicular to w1 through wn minus k of x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x is equal to lambda k. And the maximum over W1 through WK minus 1, the minimum X not equal to 0, X in C to the N, x perpendicular to w1 through wk minus 1 x hemisian ax over x hemisian x is also equal to lambda k so there are two ways to write lambda k as a solution to an optimization problem and in both cases it is a double optimization there is a min max in one case and a max min in the other case and uh, <clears throat> of course, like I mentioned before, if k equal to 1 or n, um, in, in this case, when k equals 1, this goes over w1 through wn minus 1 and x perpendicular to w1 to wn minus 1. Whereas in this case, this maximization step, you can drop it because there is no such thing as w0. So this constraint doesn't arise. So you just have to do the minimum over all x not equal to 0 x in c to the n x hemisian ax over x hemisian x that will be equal to lambda 1 and so this constraint also drops off similarly when k equals n um, there is no such thing as w0 here so this minimization drops off and similarly x perpendicular to w1 through w0 there is no such thing so this constraint also drops off and so the maximum over all non-zero x of x emission ax over x emission x is equal to lambda n. Okay, so when k equals 1 or n, in one of the two cases, we will be omitting one of the outer optimizations. Okay, so we'll prove this result. Um, we'll only prove um, the first, this first part. The other part is actually almost exactly the same, but uh, you just have to modify the steps a bit. OK, so um, <clears throat> as usual, we will write A as U lambda U Hermitian. U is unitary. 
and lambda is diagonal of lambda 1 through lambda n. Then um, let um, k be some number which is between 1 and n. Then um, uh, if x is a sum vector which is not equal to 0, then x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x is as usual u Hermitian x Hermitian lambda u Hermitian x divided by u Hermitian x Hermitian times u Hermitian x. And further, if I look at all vectors such that uh, x is uh, over all non-zero x, okay, is the same as, so I'll write it this way, u Hermitian x, x in c to the n, x not equal to zero is the same as the set of vectors y in c to the n, y not equal to zero. In other words, I'm thinking of u Hermitian x as y, and if I want to uh, optimize this over all x not equal to zero, I can as well optimize it over all y not equal to zero. So if w1 through wn minus k in c to the n are given, then the soup of x not equal to zero x perpendicular to w1 through wn minus k of x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x is equal to the supremum over y not equal to 0, y perpendicular to instead of uh, since x is um, since y is u Hermitian x, I can write this as y is perpendicular to u Hermitian w1 etc. up to u Hermitian w n minus k of y Hermitian lambda y over y Hermitian y. And as before, I'll expand this out. And uh, this numerator is actually equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n lambda i times mod y i square. And further, I can impose a constraint that y Hermitian y equal to 1 and optimize this over all y Hermitian y equal to 1. Um, okay, so just for the sake of completeness, let me write this step. This is equal to supremum over y Hermitian y equals 1. y perpendicular to u Hermitian w1 up to um, u Hermitian w n minus k of sigma i equal to 1 to n lambda i mod y i square. Now I'll do my brilliant thing from the previous uh, discussion and I'll say that this is greater than or equal to the supremum over y Hermitian y equals 1 y perpendicular to u Hermitian w1 up to u Hermitian uh, w n minus k and I'll further set y1 to yk minus 1 yk minus 1 equal to 0 of the summation i equal to 1 to n yi mod lambda i uh, lambda i mod y i square but since I've set all these guys equal to 0 I can go i equal to k to n lambda i mod y i square And this in turn is equal to the supremum. Since the first k minus 1 terms are equal to 0, this constraint y Hermitian y equals 1 reduces to yk square plus yk plus 1 square plus etc. up to yn squared equals 1. 
and y should still remain perpendicular to u Hermitian w1 up to u Hermitian w n minus k of sigma i equal to k to n lambda i mod y i square. And of course, as before, this is a convex combination of lambda k, lambda k plus 1 up to lambda n. And um, this convex combination is at least equal to the smallest value here. And another way to think about it is I'll replace all these lambda i's with lambda k. Then I'm only decreasing the value. And uh, summation k equal to i equal to k to n mod y i squared equals 1 because of this constraint here. And so there's nothing left to optimize. And so I can say that this is greater than or equal to lambda k. Okay, so what we've shown then is that the supremum over all x naught equal to 0, x perpendicular to w1 through w n minus k, x Hermitian ax divided by x Hermitian x is greater than or equal to lambda k. And this is true for arbitrary w1 through w n minus k. But uh, again, the previous result above shows that which is I'm referring to this one here. I'm scrolling up. So the minimum over, yeah, yeah. So as a first step, I need to change k to n minus k. Then um, what will happen is this un, um, I would be doing uh, so if I replace k by n minus k, I would be going from un un minus 1 up to u, I've replaced k with n minus k and I would have uh, I'm counting down I have to count down up to um, u k plus, plus one. one. Yes, sir. Okay, and this, if if x is perpendicular to all of these vectors, then what I will get here will be. Let me write this with a different color so that it is not confusing later on. U n, U n minus one, U k plus one will give me. I've replaced k with n minus k, so I'll get lambda k here. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll call this vector w1, this vector w2, etc. Then this will become w. So if, uh, yeah, so this will, so how many vectors do I have here? I have, I'm going down from n to k plus 1. So there is, n minus n minus k. there are exactly n minus k vectors here. And so I have w1 through wn minus k. So basically, if I set w1 equals un, w2 equals un minus 2, and w uh, and u, um, uh, wn minus k equals uk plus 1, the maximum of this uh, subject to x perpendicular to all these vectors will be equal to lambda k. Okay, so the largest value this can take for that specific choice of w1 through wn minus 1, uh, w1, w2 up to wn minus k is equal to lambda k. So therefore, yeah, just go back and think about it. 
So this result shows that uh, equality, equality here is valid when wi equals u n minus i plus 1. Okay, that implies that the infimum over all w1 through w n minus k of the supremum x not equal to 0, x perpendicular to w1 through w n minus k, x Hermitian a x over x Hermitian x is equal to lambda k, which completes the proof. Okay, so um, I don't want to go further ahead. The next theorem is a is another very very crucial theorem, which is called Weyl's theorem. We'll discuss that in the next class. But uh, what I strongly suggest is, uh, you know, you guys should definitely go over the proof on your own and make sure you understand every step of this proof because the ideas in this proof will use again and again and again to prove many many more results and um, uh, and these arguments are uh, slightly tricky to convey orally especially in this online mode and since i can't see you guys i don't know if you are able to follow the proof uh, as i explained it or not but based on whatever I said, if you now go back and look at the proof on your own, you will be able to fill in the steps. And if you're not, then please stop me at the beginning of the next class and ask me which step you weren't able to follow. And we can go over the argument again. But the arguments we made today are crucial. We are going to reuse them in many proofs going forward. And uh, at that time, if this proof is not completely clear to you, you won't follow many of the proofs that we are going to discuss in the following classes. So please spend some time on it. So we'll stop here for today and we'll continue in the next class.